when you went through a typical day of what you'd eat, you talked about breakfast, you'd have something light at that time, and then later touched on intermittent fasting and calorie restriction. I want to take some time and, and dig into the two there. Intermittent fasting, something that in the health and wellness space right now is really popular, especially when it comes to weight loss and other health benefits. You're obviously somebody that isn't practicing that yourself, and it sounds like you're more into the calorie restriction. So I'd love for you to get into the two different aspects there and why you feel the way you do. Well, I mean, and this is really a focal point of the my next book that will come out next March. Um you know, what is the real science? You know, one of the themes we've been talking about is that lots of things that people are doing, lots of things that people believe in, a lot of things that people are acting on in the wellness and health space. I come at this from a scientist to say, you know, what's a myth and what's real science? What is data driven? Well, it turns out that for intermittent fasting, it's something that is trendy. But actually, researchers have known about interfasting, intermittent fasting for a long time um, and caloric restriction. And they're, they're, they're very cl- close and different. I'll try to give you the, the short answer from this, and we could do a whole, uh, whole session just on these, um, uh, these concepts alone. But in a nutshell, um, uh, intermittent fasting means that you're not eating all the time. Intermittently fasting, look, when we go to bed at night and we're not eating, we're intermittently fasting. And you get up in the morning. What do you do when you eat something? You have breakfast, break fast. You're breaking your intermittent fast and you're going on and eating. And in fact, we're intermittently fasting between breakfast and lunch and between lunch and dinner. The problem is really um, we've turned into a snacking culture and we've got abundance of food. So we're eating all the time and putting stuff in our body all the time. Mindless eating, not giving your body, your metabolism a chance to relax, chill out, reboot itself. Um, uh, and that overload that, that causes a metabolic overload that taxes your system and it screws up the hormone that your normal healthy fat makes to make it difficult to lose weight um, uh, and, and actually to have a hormonal cycle uh, that's actually your, your body's hormones for metabolism are knocked out of whack. So intermittent fasting is actually really, really helpful. We do it normally. And people that are doing intermittent fasting, with you know, the, the, the different time frames. They're doing it in a more disciplined fashion, but um, and we can talk about this another time. But I mean, really, that's a that that's a um, uh, that is one mode of actually res- uh, 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 limiting the times that you are actually putting fuel into your body. Now, caloric restriction is related but different. Caloric restriction just means. I'm trying to make things easy for people to understand, um, but I, and this is how I first understood it, and it's still the case. Caloric restriction is exactly what it sounds like: eating less calories. All right, here's an example: if you sit down and you had a cake in front of you and you ate the entire cake and not just a piece, you're not clearly not restricting your calorie. But if you actually ate a, a whole bowl of of, uh, of beans, okay. Uh, and you, you had a, uh, a, a serving, a, a couple of, you know, a small serving of it. Um, that, that's healthy for you. But if you ate the entire pot of beans, you'd be also, also overloading calories in your body as well. Even though there's some good stuff, you're actually overloading your system. So, um, calorie restrictions is basically saying don't overload your body. And it's beneficial. And think about it this way. It's like going to the filling station, if you drive a car using gasoline still, and filling up your tank. What do you do? Uh, your tank's running on empty. You got to fill it up. You go there. You put the nozzle into the tank, and you click it, and uh, it's running, filling up, filling up, filling up. That's the equivalent of e- when we're eating food, all right? Now, what happens when it's like when it, the tank's filled? There's a, The nozzle has a sensor that will click off when the tank is full. And you're not overloading it and you put the tank back and you drive off and you're starting to burn down the fuel. That's basically like eating a normal size meal and going off and doing your daily activities, including a little physical activity, a little exercise. All right. Now, what happens is that in an era of abundancy and a society where there's food all around all the time, it's like filling your car with gas all the time. And not only are you filling up the car with gas all the time. All right. Um, you're actually overloading it. So imagine that that little clicker that stops the fuel coming out. Imagine that was broken 
and now you're just pumping the fill and the gas tank is full. What happens next? The gas comes rushing out of the tank, spills down the side of the car, gets on your shoes, and it is a, it's a lethal hazard. It's a fire hazard. That's what happens when we do caloric overload. And so when people talk about caloric restrictions, I try to tell people, look, it's kind of like overfilling your, your car with gas. You don't want to be doing that. It's dangerous for you. And rather than thinking about it like some kind of like um, rigid thing that you have to follow and you need to calculate it, like I know there's biohackers that are that are into that, and I, I, I credit them for doing that. Um, but, you know, for most normal people who don't want to be counting their calories and measuring and weighing their food, what I would say is that give your body a break, give your metabolism a break, and don't overload your gas tank because that's actually what eating calories are. It's putting fuel into your body. You don't want to overload it because just like anything else, if you overload your fuel tank, it becomes a danger. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. So while it's very important to know how to choose the right foods, it's equally important to know what foods we want to be cautious of, wary, and cut down or cut out or avoid altogether. We're feeding our gut bacteria.